um, get started here. Um, I'm going to put everybody on mute and we're going to get started. I'll open up with a word of prayer and then we'll, then we'll get started. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for our lying down last night and our rising back up this morning. Now we ask, Lord God, that uh, you would open our eyes, open our understanding. As we go into this workshop, Lord God, we pray that uh, your spirit will guide us. Your spirit will lead us. Your spirit will refresh us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Um, I'm putting everyone on mute. And uh, okay. Um, and of course, if you, uh, I'm going to be asking some questions, of course. Uh, and so those of you who would like to answer, please unmute yourself and uh, give us an answer. Um, but uh, how many of you uh, remember our uh, home assignment from last week? Who did their home assignment from last week? In fact, last week, what did we talk about last week? We talked about last week. Good morning. We talked about the heart. Yeah, talk about the heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for um, for Angela for uh, um, giving us that answer out of eighteen people that are on this platform. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, what did I send you home to do? I sent you home with a home assignment. What was that home assignment? We had to complete um, the pages that were following the heart discussion. And also you asked us to write down 10 things that we were good at. Yeah, yeah, write down 10 things that you were good at, okay? Uh, does uh, uh, does anybody want to uh, give us their answer? Maybe you don't have 10 things. Maybe you have five things. Uh, maybe you have two things. But anybody want to share what they came up with? I have something. Okay. Who is that? Maya. Who? Okay, Maya. Okay, go ahead, Maya. Um. I'm good at performing when it comes to singing. I'm good at being helpful. Um, it's okay if it's only two that you can think of. Um, I mean, I can think of two right now. I okay. okay, good, good. That's very good, too. Okay, anybody else want to share? Uh, so me as mom, this is Sandra. Um, one of the things that I'm good at and that I really enjoy doing is organizing, cleaning and organizing. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Okay, organizing. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, anyone else? I have something. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, um, I like encouraging, motivating, helping, crafting, organizing, planning, um, Hospitality, making people feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what else. I like reading. Okay. Um, okay. And that's about it, I think. Now, which ones are you good at? Oh, organizing, motivating, helping others, planning. Okay. Organizing, motivating. Okay, great. Okay, yeah. Okay, keep those handy. Um, Sister Washington, I think I saw your hand. Yes. Hi. Good afternoon. I'm okay. trying to find my sticky note and I lost it. But from what I can remember, I had to ask people to help me with my list. 
Um, and so what they identify my uh, strengths are um, I'm caring, I'm listening, um, I communicate, a good communication, um, analytical, um, and that's all I can remember. I can't find my sticky note. That's all I have. Okay, and I'm I'm glad to hear that you uh, got some people to uh, to help you to identify those. But what do you think you're good at? Which ones do you think you're good at? Um, analytical, analyzing, okay. um, organizing. Organizing. Okay. Um, I can't think of it. Um, yeah, but I can't think of the other. I gotta find my list. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay, Pastor, huh? this is this is Sister Harriet. Uh-huh. Okay, I have um I'm good at giving, being a mediator, cleaning, caring, encouraging people, and always try to be at peace with everybody. Okay. And now now which one are you good at? Giving, giving, that's number one. Okay, now when you say giving, are you talking about giving yourself or giving Finances, which way, which Both. one are you talking about? Both. Both? Okay. Yes. Okay. Very and mediator, good. I try to to try to solve problems for people that at log ends. Mm -hmm. I don't like to see people, you know, fighting or whatever. It gets on my nerves. <laughs> okay, that's fair enough. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anybody anybody else want to share what they came up with? This is Leslie. Okay. And um, I had helping others, volunteering, um, hospitality, cooking, shopping. Okay. Um, um, finding resources for um, not only myself, but others that are in need of help or assistance. Yeah. Okay. But now, which one are you really good at? Helping others. Helping others. Now, what do you mean by helping others? Because that's a very broad category. Um, I tend to uh, gravitate to older people that may be in need of assistance, um, whether it's doing um, domestic stuff or just okay. um, spending time with them or uh, shopping, cleaning, or uh, doing errands whatever the need is for them. So, so you're very good at caregiving? Yes. Good, very good. Okay, okay. So, so why, do you, why do you think that I had you to go home or to do this home assignment? Why do you think this was so important to do? For self-awareness. Self-awareness, okay, very good. Very good, yeah, self-awareness. What else? To see the gifts that, or the abilities that you have, that you're naturally inclined to and good at, so that they could be used in the, in the body. So not just the body of Christ, but then also um, even externally when you're in the world as well. Um, maybe you haven't recognized the area that you're good at and, <laughs> maybe you know doing this exercise it can allow you to come to some realization of either to see whether you're in a place where you should be or maybe move over to a place where you could be better suited with your abilities very good very good very good okay That's very good anybody else oh uh, there's somebody that has background noise i'm sorry everybody i'm gonna to have to put you on mute So much. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Very good. Very good answer. Uh, anybody else want to uh, contribute to that answer? She she gave a very good answer there. But why do you think this 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 uh, was very important for you to do this? Sherelle has her hand up. Yes. Thank you. I think it helped us to identify our uh, our strengths, and then maybe we're not utilizing those strengths in the church. 
Very good. I think Very it's good. more of a, it's making us aware. Um, we all, sometimes we think we're not good at something, but maybe there's a, our strengths can be used in the church. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. Um, but that's, yeah, because, you know, and I, I, I like the answer of self-awareness because self-awareness is very, very important that you know. Um, uh, when you look at your, um, um, your uh, current um, vocation or your current job, what you're doing on your current job, you got to ask yourself, is, is, is this something that I'm doing just for a living or am I doing this because it is fulfilling, um, is very fulfilling for me? That's that. And I don't want you, you know, you don't have to answer that, but, but, but that's one of the things that you really want to uh, kind of ask yourself is, is what I'm doing currently on my job or what I'm doing voluntarily, if I'm volunteering for something, is it fulfilling me? Am I very good at it? Or, or am I working a job just to make money? You, know, you have to ask yourself that question. And a lot of times when people ask themselves that question, uh, many people come up with an answer of, well, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this because, you know, I'm in it for the money, you know, but I'm really not doing what I really want to do. Okay. I'm really not doing what I really want to do. Um, and uh, so um, um, if you have a job that you are doing, and you're there to just to, you know, make an income, okay? But you're good at, I mean, you learned the skill, okay? You learned the skill, you're, 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 you're pretty good at what you uh, do because you've probably been doing it for a long time. Um, you know, you have experience in it, you know, um, but, but, but yet there is still something within your heart that you really want to do. And that you know that God has placed within you uh, something that you feel that you are not being fulfilled with. That's where God wants you to begin to uh, examine yourself. And today we're going to be talking, we're going to go a little deeper because um, we, are, we were talking about spiritual gifts. We were talking last week about passions, you know, uh, um, you know, what you like to do and what you're good at, okay? What you like to do and what you're good at. We have a lot of people that that um, that have an occupation, but it's really not their passion. It's really not what they're good at, okay? And, uh, and, and so a lot of times we don't know uh, God's purpose for our lives is because sometimes we never explored our passions. We never explored what we're really good at. Okay. And so this is why this workshop is so important because we want to begin to, uh, to examine ourselves or look at ourselves in such a way, in an honest way, so that we can uh, begin to explore uh, deep into our hearts, what we really want to do. Okay. Um, so this, this is a question. I want you to take out a, a pen or a pencil, and I want you to write down this question here, okay? I want you to write this down. I'm going to say it slow, and I want you to write it down. I want you to think about it. I believe my most valuable personal assets are I believe my most valuable personal assets are, and I want you to write down at least about three of them. This is what I believe my most valuable personal assets are. Looking at yourself. A lot of us never taking the time to really 
ask ourselves those questions. A lot, of, a lot of times we don't we don't take the time to kind of really examine our hearts. But I believe my most valuable personal assets are. So you might write out 10, but I want you to write out the top three, maybe the top two. What is my most valuable assets? Okay. So if someone... Uh, uh, was to ask you that. At least you should know your top three. Okay? At least you, you should know your top three because these top three probably most likely are the ones that you love to do, that you're passionate about, and that you're good at. You might be good at one, you might be good at two, but you're really good at it. Okay, that's very, very important. I want you to keep uh, keep that question in front of you, keep your answers in front of you, because as we go into this lesson today, uh, how many of you read the book? How many of you read the chapter on abilities? Okay, let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. If you read it, okay, great, great. What did you get out of the chapter? Just unmute yourself. Tell me one of the things that you uh, got out of the chapter that you never knew? What I got out of the chapter is um, you might have abilities to do things that you enjoy, but really God gave you the abilities to bless other people in ways that... Very good. Very good. Yeah. That was a very important point. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Very, very good. Yeah. Somebody else. Somebody else share what you got out of the chapter. That you didn't know about before. So no one read it. That's what I'm taking. That's 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 the uh that's uh, the, uh, Pastor, I think um not to be self-centered. Not to be self-centered? Yes. Okay. Explain that a little bit more. How did the chapter um, kind of unfold that? I mean, to be, not to be self-centered, not to put yourself in front of people, not to think of yourself first. Okay, good. That's what, that's what, I, that's what I got. Okay. I might be wrong, but... That's how that's that's what you got out of reading reading the chapter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Someone else? Someone else want to share? Okay. Um, because because for these past couple of weeks we've been we've been saying throughout these uh, first couple of weeks that we've been together that um, that God never makes copies, okay? Mm -hmm. You are an original because originals are more valuable yes. than copies, okay? So what God has given you to do and what God has uh, created you to be is exactly what he wants you to be, okay? In, in fact, Jeremiah uh, 1 and 5 uh, oh, let me ask you this. Everyone has the handout. Uh, Sister Carr should have emailed everyone the handout. So um, I'm going to be going by the handout here. Everyone has the handout? Okay. Let me do a screen share here. I think I can get uh, the handout. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can everybody see the handout? Everybody is on mute. You can hear. Yes. Okay. Yes, good. we can see it. Okay. 
Good. Okay. Um, so, uh, so what God said in Jeremiah uh, 1 and 5, he said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you before you were born, I sanctified you. So God chose your, he, 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 he chose you to be you. Okay. Um, in fact, God chose your parents. Um, no matter if your parents were good parents or not very good parents, but he still chose your parents because your parents had the very unique DNA that, um, that he wanted you to have because he wanted you to be you, okay? And so you, so that you can accomplish what God purposed for you uh, in this world. So, so God does not want you to be uh, um, no one else but you, okay? He planned your, uh, your, uh, your race. He planned your gender. He planned your ethnicity because God never makes a mistake. He knew what he was doing when he made you. So God said, in fact, God said in uh, Job, uh, the 10th chapter in the eighth verse, he says this, God's hand shaped me and made me. Job 10 and 8. Job 10 and 8. God, uh, God's hand shaped me and God made me. Now, um, so we looked at spiritual gifts, uh, what I am gifted in doing, okay? And then we talked about uh, God placing within us a unique heart. In other words, he has placed passions within us, okay? Uh, uh, what do I love to do? What is, what is my passion in life? We talked about that last week. And when I discover what I love to do, I also discover that I'm passionate uh, about certain things, okay? And those certain things I found out that I was very good at. But today, Today, brothers and sisters, we're going to talk about abilities, natural abilities, okay? Um, what I'm naturally able to do, all right? What I'm naturally able to do. Um, how, many, how many of you are able to stand on one foot? <laughs> Let me see your hand. How many of you are able to stand on one foot? Okay. How many are not able to stand on? How many? How many uh, know that uh, your balance is not that well, and you cannot stand on one foot? Okay. Yeah, we have one. Okay. Yeah, that's an ability. Okay. Everybody does not have the same abilities. You know, I'm not, I'm not very good at standing on one foot. My balance is, is like off sometimes, okay? But that's an ability. That's a natural ability. So today we're going to look at God's word and learn what God says about our natural abilities and why they're important to our purpose in life, okay? Now, now there are two important verses on your outline. And I have the outline up for you, two important verses. The first one is Romans 12. He said, God has given each of us the ability to do certain things well, okay? God has given each of us the ability to do certain things well. That is that there is no such thing as a no talented person. I want, to, want you to let that sink in. There is no such thing as a no talented person. Romans 12 and six, God has given each of us the ability to do certain things. Everybody can do something, okay? You may say, I'm not good at anything. Or, well, uh, 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 according to God's word, you are absolutely wrong. Okay? 
the 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 problem we have as human beings is that we know more about what we're not good at than what we're good at. Okay, let me pick on Sister Washington for a minute. <laughs> Sister Sister Washington had to ask people about what they felt she was good at. Because a lot of times we don't think about that. Okay. And the same as me, you know, sometimes I have to ask people, what do you think I'm good at? You know, but a lot of times we're, we're, we're very good at identifying what we're not good at instead of what we're good at. Can I get a witness? Amen. Yeah. So, so you may say I'm not good at anything, but according to Romans 12 and 6, all of us, all of us are good at something, okay? Maybe you were told by your parents or a family member or maybe some so-called friend at school or someone in your neighborhood uh, who tried to convince you that you had no talent at all. Maybe because you had a physical or mental handicap that made you different from other people and you convince yourself you had no talent, but I want you to know today that you're absolutely wrong. You do have a talent. And if I were to ask you to write down 20 things you're not good at, you could write down those without any hesitation. I'm not good at this, I'm not good at that. Because why? Why is it so easy to do that? Because a lot of times we compare ourselves with other people. We're always looking at other people and saying, man, how come I can't do that? You know, or how come God didn't bless me that way? You know, you know, but if we're to ask, but if we were to ask you to write down those 20 things you're not good at, I bet you you can just knock those out. But if we were to ask you to give us 20 things you're good at, you probably have to probably say, well, give me a week at least. <laughs> let me let me think about this, you know? Um, but did you know that the average human being has between five and 800 abilities? Did you know that? Ooh, how many? Every human being has between five and 800 abilities. Most of them we don't know we have, or we may have used in the past and never realized we used them. Okay, these, these abilities come naturally to you. In fact, we don't realize we're using them most of the time, really. But we just, we just use them. You, you probably use a hundred of them today just by getting up, washing up, eating, um, preparing for this class maybe today. Maybe if you have children, you probably use another hundred there, okay? <laughs> um, you know, and uh, if, if you're a caretaker, if you have someone in your home that you're taking care of, you probably use another 50 of those, okay? So, so we use so many abilities, natural abilities, that we don't realize we're using. Okay? We don't realize all of us are physically shaped differently. So all those things that we use are different. Okay. So what I used this morning, I, I taught the men's Bible study. So there were some things I had to, to do this morning uh, was different probably than what you had to do to prepare for this class today. But all of us are shaped differently. You know, um, but but because we're shaped differently, God has given us natural abilities to do different things. For an example, some are shaped to play baseball. Some are shaped to dance. You know, how many of you are good at dancing? Let me see your hand. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm like I'm like you know two left feet. You know what I mean? But I get out there. I'm. I'll lean from side to side, right and left, you know, but, uh, you know, but some, some are good at dancing because why? Their, their, uh, their coordination 
you know, is very, you know, you, 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 your, your, your coronation is very good. Okay. Um, some, some are shaped the same and dance. Some are shaped to serve in the military. Some are shaped to become doctors or nurses, mathematicians, scientists. Okay. Some are shaped to be pastors, such as myself, teachers. Some are shaped to be comedians. You ever been around somebody, they just make you laugh, you know, and you just say, wow, you know, you just, they're just naturals. You know, we always call those guys, you know, those, those persons, but they just, they're just natural. They just make you laugh, you know, because we're all shaped differently, aren't we? Yeah, you know, uh, uh, some, some are shaped um, to learn in different ways. You know, I know some people can sit down and read a book while the music is on. I couldn't do that. I have to have everything quiet in order for me to read a book. How many is like that? Let me see your hand. Yeah, yeah, I got to have it quiet in the room, you know? Uh, I can't have any other distractions, okay? Um, you know, and some some are able to sit down and, and they're able to learn and they're able to do a lot of things that are, that with all these other distractions around them, they have no problem. Because why? Everybody is shaped differently. Your abilities are different from mine. Some are shaped to be, uh, 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 to, uh, um, to be able to read music and play music. Some know how to play pianos, organs, instruments. You know, some are visual learners and others are hands-on, okay? So you have some people uh, who are college persons and some people are not college persons. You know, some will go to college and some will not go to college. Some are very good with their hands, you know, vocationally. Everybody has different abilities, okay? We're not the same but it would be wrong for us to say, I'm not good at anything, but you're good at something. You just haven't discovered it yet. The problem in our society today though, because everybody is so different. I want you to think about this brothers and sisters. Everybody is different from one another. And the problem with our society today is that when we go to school, for an example, we all are treated the same way even though we don't learn the same way. Sometimes teachers don't take the time to learn children's shape, but they're expected to act and to learn in the same way, you know? Some children are very active. Some children have to, have to be moving all the time. And then sometimes we expect children to sit down and be quiet and they can't be quiet. Why? Because they're so what? Active. Yeah, because why? We're different in so many ways, aren't we? In fact, we are expected to take these standardized tests, you know, the SAT and uh, the PSAT, and these, these tests only judge one form of intelligence. But we have so many people that have different intelligence, different ways of learning. Why? Because our abilities are not the same. But in the military, we discovered that there are at least eight to nine different forms of intelligence. There are at least eight to nine. That's what we learned in the military. Okay, as an officer, you know, we had to study people. As a chaplain in the military, I had to study people. And one of the things that we have learned was that eight, we have, we have people that at least have eight to nine different forms of intelligence. Everybody do not learn the same way. Everybody don't move the same way. Everybody don't see the problems the same way, okay? All right, so, so for an example, if I was to invite you over to my house for a meal and I was to bring at least about six to eight of you around the table, and if I spilled a glass of milk, each and every one of you would look at that mistake and look at that incident in eight ways, eight different ways, okay? So if I was to tell you a problem that I have, you know, 
all of us on this platform, all 24 of us will have a different way of solving that problem because nobody is the, no, nobody is the same. Everybody's intelligence is different. So in the military, we learn that there are at least eight to nine different forms of intelligence. We have some people who say, give me a book and let me read it and I can ace the test. We have some people say, look, I don't wanna sit in the class. I don't wanna be on the lecture. Just give me the book, let me read it. I'll come back and I'll ace the, ace the test. And got some people who are like that. And then we have another person that might say, show me what you want me to do and I can perform up the standard, okay? And uh, so, because everybody is shaped differently, okay? A person who, who is a basketball player probably is naturally tall. So they're gonna be able to dunk the ball. They're gonna be able to, uh, to uh, shoot. You know, they're, they're gonna be able to do a whole lot of things, you know, um, that you may not be able to do, right? Science, you know, you have people who have science minds who know how to analyze. I think somebody who just mentioned that this morning that I'm very good at analyzing. You know, so you have people that are very good in, in analytical thinking. You know, I know Brother Ken Johnson, he's good at numbers. He's good at math, you know, and uh, he can, you know, he can give you numbers off the top of his head, you know, but uh, I'm not like that. So everybody has different abilities. And that's why it's so important that you learn your abilities. It's very important that you come in contact with it. Let me, let me tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story. There was a story about um, some animals that decided to start a school for animals. So all the animals that they had uh, invited to this school was a duck, a rabbit, a squirrel, and a bald eagle. It was a duck, it was a rabbit, it was a squirrel, and a bald eagle. Okay? And the courses... Uh, that they offered in the school included running, climbing, swimming, and flying. And they decided that all the animals that they had coming, the duck, the rabbit, the squirrel, the bald eagle, they had to go through all of these exercises of running, climbing, swimming, flying. So they decided, so they, so they decided to take all of them through these courses regardless of their shape, regardless of what they were created to be. Well, they called the duck first, and the duck was a, uh, a student, of course, in swimming, as you can uh, imagine, but, the own, but he only made a passing grade in flying and, and performed poorly at running. So they made him drop swimming and made him stay at the school to be tutored in running and flying. And this caused the duck's feet to swell up because the duck wasn't, wasn't used to running. And guess what happened? Eventually the duck dropped out of school. Then they said the rabbit, well, the rabbit started at the top of his class and running as you can well imagine, but made failing grades in swimming. So they made him take up swimming and he had to drop out of school because he caught the pneumonia by getting wet. So he dropped out of school. Then they got the squirrel. This, 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 the the uh, squirrel showed outstanding abilities in climbing trees and running. And, and he was frustrated when he had to take flying lessons because his teacher made him uh, start uh, from the ground up rather than from the treetop down and he got a Charlie horse, horse from overextending. And so eventually you guessed it, he made a failing grade and he failed the entire course. And the ball eagle, oh my God, the ball eagle was the problem student because he was a non-conformant, you know? Um, uh, he, 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 he made outstanding grades in flying. You know, he can beat everybody in flying to the top of mountains and trees. And he did it very, very well. But finally, he refused to participate in swimming and running in classes. And so what they end up doing for him, they expelled him from the course. 
I guess what I'm trying to say to everybody is that everyone is shaped differently. No one is the same. Okay. Um, um, and, and the same can be said about each and every one of you. The same can be said about our children. You know, many times society expect them to learn and perform the same way and they become frustrated and discouraged and they end up failing because no one took the time to look at their shape. Okay. So you were made in the same way. Okay. That's why God place these these uh he, he place you he shape you so that your abilities will fit your shape okay and how your shape will determine how you use your abilities okay god place those abilities within you so you can be who you are in fact let's look at the outline look at your outline uh look at romans 12 and 6 again he said, God has given each of us the ability to do certain things, okay? So I want you to write this down. I want you to write this, this sentence down because this is probably going to change your life. Write this sentence down. Your abilities are the map to what God wants you to be in life. Your abilities are the map to what God wants you to be in life. What you're good at, what you're naturally good at. You know, we, we talked about the rabbit. He's good at running. We talked about the eagle. He's good at flying. We talked about the duck. He's good at swimming. Well, those abilities are the map. They're the guide. They're the key to what God wants you to be in life. That statement should change your life. Because a lot of times we try to look for things, say, Lord, what is, what is my purpose in life? I don't know what my purpose is in life, but he's already given it to you. Look at what you're good at, what you're naturally good at. Because that spiritual gift that you have is always connected to your abilities. He never gives you a spiritual gift of of singing, for an example, without giving you the natural ability to sing. Some people can play a piano. They're, they're, they can learn the skills of playing a piano, but there's a difference between one who has that natural ability to play the piano when someone learns the skills of playing a piano. So when you know what you're good at, that's what God wants you to be. So when you look at what you're good at, what you're naturally good at, that you can, what you're naturally good at, I can wake you up 3 a.m. in the morning and you have no problem in functioning in that ability. Look at the next verse on your handout, Hebrews 13, 21. It said, God will equip you with all you need for doing his will. He will equip you with all you need. That's Hebrews 13, 21, the living Bible. That's LB, the living Bible. He will equip you with all you need for doing his will. Notice that it does not say God will equip you with all of the abilities you see other people that have. No, no, no. He said, I will equip you with all you need in doing his will. Okay, doing his will does not mean that you have to try to get everybody else's ability or you want to be like somebody else. And you said, man, you know, I wish I can do this and do that. But God said, no, I want you to hone in on you. Because sometimes we look at other people and say, oh, I want to sing like that other person. Or I want to do... Um, numbers like that other person. I want to run like that other person. Man, I want to, to lead like that other person. But God, if he's not giving you that ability to do that, God said, now I want you to focus in on you. What are you good at? Okay. What do you love to do? What are you good at? Okay. God never intended for us to have 
and ability we desire because all of us are shaped differently. So for an, for an, an, an example, if the rabbit was uh, uh, his, 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 his greatest event was running, but yet he could not do what the duck does. The duck is very good at swimming because that's not what the rabbit was shaped to do, okay? So we have to look at our shape. We have to look at what God has equipped us to do. God never intended for us to have anyone else's ability, but the ability that he has given you because he knew exactly what you were formed and what you were born to do. We give God glory when we use the ability God has given us. I want you to remember that. We give God the glory. God gets the glory out of our lives when we are functioning within the ability that God gives us. In fact, look at your handout again in Hebrews 13, 21 again. He said, God will equip you with all you need for doing his will. He said, I'm going to equip you to do that. So if God placed you in the place where you are right now, it's not a mistake. God said, I've given you the ability to do that. Okay, it just didn't happen. God never does anything haphazardly. God always has a purpose for allowing us to end up in the places where we are because why God has already given us the ability to handle it. So whenever God asks you to do something, God will give you the ability to do it, okay? God will never ask you to do something he has not given you the ability to do. Okay, so how do we decide what we're to do in our lives? How do we decide what we're to do in our lives? What, what classes should I take in college? What career uh, choice should I make in my life? You know, these, these, are, these are very uh, relevant questions that uh, especially students, younger people, ask about themselves. Because a lot of people, did you know that the average person who graduate from college is not working in under the, uh, uh, the major that that person has taken? No, no, some of them are, but most of them are not. So you need to kind of, before you go to college, those of you who are in high school, then you need to learn your shape. You need to learn your ability. What, a, what natural ability has God given you? What are you crazy about? What are you passionate about? What are you good at? That's probably most likely what God wants you to do. And if that is it, then God wants you to hone in on that. He wants you to cultivate that. He wants you to study about that. He wants you to do the best, be the best that you can. Okay, so what classes do, should I take in college? What career choice should I make in college? In fact, who should I marry and not marry, All right? You know, who, what, what type of people should I be around, All right? You know, what, 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 what should I be doing? Um, write, write this down on your outline. Write this down on your outline. Listen, my abilities match my call. My abilities match my call. Every believer is called into ministry. Every believer, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, you were called into ministry. When I say called into ministry, I'm not talking about you are a preacher. I'm not talking about that uh, you are a teacher. No, no, no. There are two major callings every believer has upon their life when they give their life to Jesus Christ. Here's the first one, write it down. We are called to salvation. We are called to salvation. We're called to be in the presence of God. That's salvation. Every human being, notice 
In fact, when you read the word of God, when, uh, when Adam, when God created Adam, he created him and he placed him in Eden. When you begin to, when you begin to research the name Eden, Eden means presence. Adam was created to be in the presence of God. Humanity was, uh, was created. Whether you're male or female, you were created to be in the presence of God. Because when you're not in the presence of God, then you're not going to function correctly. For an example, when you take a fish out of the water, what does that fish do? That fish start jumping around. That fish start moving around. Because why? It's out of its element. Because why? The fish has scales and is created to function in that environment. Now, 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 let me ask you this. When a person is sent down into the depths of the sea, what does that person have to have on? That person has to have on some type of suit that will help that person to function within the depths of the sea. Think about people who are, who are, who are in outer space. When we send people out of space, they have to have what? A space suit because they're in an environment that God really did not create them to be in, okay? In fact, when you, when, let me get a little theological with you. You know, when you and I go to heaven, we're going to leave these bodies here on earth. Why? Because we call these bodies earth suits. This is the body that I need to function on this earth. But when we get to heaven, the Bible says no flesh and blood will inherit the kingdom of God. So you and I are going to have a new body because we're going to function in a new uh, a, a new environment when we get to heaven. So it is with when it comes to you functioning here on earth. When you come, when it comes to you functioning here on earth, the first calling is salvation because you were created to be in the presence of God. If your heart is not right, if your heart is not right, if you're not right with God in your heart, then you are not, listen, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have a problem in trying to function and trying to be what God wants me to be. Because why? Because my heart is not right with God. And that's the devil's job. The devil's job is to come and to separate you and I from God. That's what happened to Adam and Eve. That when the devil came in, he caused Adam and Eve to sin. And guess what? It separated them from God. They are no longer in the presence of God. And when you take humanity out of the presence of God, they begin to malfunction. That's why we have so much stuff that's going on now in our society. Why? Because people are not functioning in the presence of God. There's no way in the world. I can be the best person that God wants me to be. There's no way in the world I can be an a, a individual that seeks to do the right thing if I'm not in the presence of God. I treat my neighbor right because why? I'm in the presence of God. I seek to do right, why? Because I'm in the presence of God. If you're not in the presence of God, the first thing you do is to do wrong. Come on, somebody. So God won us. That's your first calling as a human being. We're called to salvation. The second calling is that we're called to serve. Write it down. We're called to serve. Okay? We're called to serve upon the earth. If you are self-centered and you find out what God wants you to do upon this earth, you're going to have a problem because you're going to be, God can't use self-centered people. We're called to serve one another. 
That's what that's that's what we're called to do. We're called to serve in some capacity. That's what Jesus demonstrated when his disciples was in the upper room. The Bible said he began to wash their feet. He began to serve them. Okay? So how I know how to serve or where I should serve, we serve by using our spiritual gifts in our natural ability. Because our natural abilities hook on to our spiritual gifts. Okay? It's very important to remember. We're called to salvation. And we're called to serve. Okay? And how I know how to serve or where I should serve, we serve by using our spiritual gift and the natural ability that it takes to perform in my spiritual gift. Okay. Let me stop right here and take some questions. Unmute yourself if you like to ask a question or the if you have a comment. Let me take a few minutes. Anybody have any comment? Okay. Okay. Let's let's take a few minutes breaks. Um, what time is it now? It is five minutes to one. Um, let's let's be back in the on the platform by one o'clock, and uh, we can go to part two. Okay. Let's take a break. This is what I told you to, to download. The See everyone at one o'clock. No. But this is what I asked you to give me and you didn't. What's that? Your outline.
Okay, welcome back. Um, let's uh, let's go back to our handout, and we'll continue. Okay, so um, so the last. So, so the last thing we uh, we 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 said was um, that how I know how to serve or where I should serve. We serve by using our spiritual gift and our natural abilities. Now, God expects us to use our God-given abilities in six ways. Now, I want you to look at your handout because I'm going to give you these six ways in which God expects us to use our abilities. In other words, there are six reasons God has given you your abilities. Six reasons. The first reason, you want to write this down, the first reason is my abilities are to be used to honor God. That's number one. My abilities are to be used to honor God. And that comes from 1 Corinthians 10, 31. It's on your handout. Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. That's how you honor God. Is that whatever we do, we're to do it for the glory of God. In other words, all our abilities we have is to be used for God's glory. Brothers and sisters, no matter what your ability is, no matter what it is, one person's ability is no more important than the other. All of them are important because God has placed abilities in every person. Every person is important in God's eyes. Okay, no matter if it's administration, no matter if you're a person that uh, that is a floral arranging person, uh, maybe you're a programmer, maybe you operate in arts and crafts, okay? Food preparation, public speaking, 
athletic sports, graphic designs. Let me name a couple more here. Um, whether you're a puppet, video, visual person, insurance agent, okay, cake decorating person, landscaping person, whether you're a secretary, office support person, doesn't matter, you know, all of these abilities are important in the sight of God, okay? Doesn't matter whether you're a, a, a trip planner or, or an event trip planner, your word processor, facilities management, plumber, writer, finance person, no matter what it is, every ability is important in the eyes of God. One is no more important than the other. There is no, remember this, what I had you to write down. There is no unimportant ability in God's kingdom. There is no unimportant ability in God's kingdom. We honor God by using our natural abilities that God has given us. We honor him when we use those natural abilities we're good at. All God require is that, and I want you to look at 1 Corinthians 10, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. That's what he wants you to do. Do it all for the glory of God. God said, I gave it to you, but I expect you to use it. If you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Okay? So that means you got to take your eyes off of everybody else and focus it on you. Cultivate what God has given you. Learn all you can about your ability. Put all you can into it. Okay? Because God, because you honor God by not only doing, performing your abilities, but also how you perfect your ability. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Okay. Number two. Number two is God has given us our abilities to serve others. He's given us our abilities to serve others. He's given us our abilities to serve others. In fact, if you look on your handout in 1 Peter 4 and 10, it says, God says, I've given you your abilities for the benefit of others and not just for yourself. God says, I've given you your abilities for the benefit of others and not just for yourself. Okay, look at 1 Peter 4 and 10. God has given each of you some special abilities. Be sure to use them to help each other. Passing on to others, God's many kinds of blessings. That's why he's given it to you. He's given it to you to serve others. First Peter 4 and 10. Nobody is good at everything. That's why we need each other. That means I need you and you need me. Okay? No one has all the talents or abilities. Okay? We're just like a body. That's what the church is. The church is like a body. So your family, think about your family. Your family is like a body. Everybody's not the same, but we need each other. No matter if we want to admit it or not, we need each other. We need each other so we can be a blessing to one another. Let me say that again. We need each other so we can be a blessing to one another. I need you in my life and you need me in your life. No one is a lone ranger when it comes to Christianity. When it comes to life, God created it that way. We need each other. God designed it that way. This is why we need a church home. It's one of the main imp important factors of why we need the church home. This is why we need the church home because the church, because my church home has groups. We have small groups like Bible studies. We have grief share. We have men's group, women's group, marriage ministry, 
singles ministry, youth ministry, you know, young adult groups, mission groups. If we don't have it, we need it because why? We need each other. We have outreach teams. We have leadership teams. We have ministerial teams. We need each other. We have a finance team. Okay? We need each other. That's why, that's why it's so important to join yourself to a church because you need each other. Okay? We need one another to serve each other. Okay? We are better together than apart from one another. And so everybody has these abilities. Everybody has these gifts. And God place you in a church home so that we can put those gifts together and that we can serve the way that God has ordained us to serve. Let me give you a few rules of success that I learned in the military. I want you to listen to this. I'm gonna give you a, full, a few rules of success, at least about two of them. Here's the first one. If you want to be successful in life, you have to build, I want, I want you to write this down. Build on your strength so that your weaknesses become irrelevant. Build on your strength so that your weaknesses become irrelevant. Let's say it again. Build on your strength so that your weaknesses become irrelevant. Because if you keep focusing in on your weaknesses, then your strengths will become irrelevant. You don't want that to happen. You want to build on your strength so that your weaknesses become irrelevant. This is what we do in the military, you see? We're always training. We're always training on our strengths. We're always reading and practicing and learning how to build on our strength so that we will not focus on our weaknesses. A lot of people focus more on their weaknesses than they do their strengths. But this is what strengthens a church. When you have people that focus more on their strengths than their weaknesses. In other words, one performs the way he or she trains. One performs the way he or she trains. The way that they the way that you train, I can tell your performance because I can I I I can tell how you train from your performance. If you get up there and you start messing up, it's because you did not practice. You did not train. Very, very important. If you focus on your weakness, you will perform according to your weaknesses. God wants you to perform according to your strengths. These are your abilities, what you're good at, okay? What you feel comfortable in doing. What is home for you? You know, this is, this is home for me that when I work behind the scenes, I don't have to, some people say, look, put me behind the scene, let me help in some way, that's where I feel more comfortable. That's the ability that God has given me just to get in there and help people. And if that is your strength, then focus on that. But if you're not the one to be out in front, please don't get out in front because what you're gonna do, you're gonna mess up. Because that's not what God created you to be. If you focus on your weakness, you will perform according to your weakness. But when you train, when you read about it, when you focus on your strength, performing according to your strength will become second nature. Become second nature. When I hone in on my ability, on what I love to do and what I'm good at, then it becomes second nature that I'm able to perform out of it. Does that make any sense to anybody? So when you so when you when when you uh, uh, when you discover what you're good at, when you know what you're good at and you do it well and it really fulfills you, then what God wants you to do, God wants you to be a good steward by training yourself 
Add more on to it. Read more. Focus more on it. Get around people that are that are a little better than you so you can learn off of them. Amen. Develop what God has placed within you. That's how you get God glory. We saw this in 9-11. The first responders, when those towers were on fire, when those towers uh, was on fire, we saw this in the first responders that they ran towards. Most of the people that were coming out of the towers was running away from danger. But those who train with regard to their strength and to handle um, situations like that, they run towards it. Because why? It becomes second nature. They ran towards the danger because that's because that's what they trained to do. Fire department, police department, okay, doctors, nurses, when something has happened, they don't run away from it. They run towards it. Why? Because that's what they train every day. They train for this. Okay. And so, so, so when you know that you're good at something, then you need to train a little bit more. You need to cultivate. It. In other words, work on what you're good at and you will get better at it. Work on what you're good at. Work on that ability that God has given you. Then you'll get better at it. And when you get better at it, people will give God glory. They will praise God because you can tell them, oh, no, I'm a child of God. This is what God has given me. This is what happens. This is what happened in the parable of, of Jesus Christ. Write the scripture down. Write this down. Matthew 25. Remember Matthew 25, the parable of the talents? This is what was happening in the parable of the talents. In Matthew 25, verses 20 through 23, you can read it a little later on, but it's Matthew 25, verses 20 through 23, and this is what it says. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides this. What do you think this person was saying? This person was saying that I not only focused in on my abilities in the spiritual gifts that you've given me, but I also spent time in cultivating it, in developing it. So now when the Lord comes back, he's able to give of, of the Lord five more than what God has given him. And you know what the Lord says? Well done. Well done. This is what God expects to do. He said, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. This is what turned God on. This is, this is what makes God uh, joyful is when he sees his creation functioning in the way that he has created you to function. Find out what you're good at. Be satisfied with that. Don't, 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 don't try to, 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 uh, to lust after everybody else's gift. Stop looking at everybody else. God has given you enough for yourself to be able to, 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 uh, to develop yourself. Okay. I, I remember when God called me to the ministry and the first thing I asked the Lord said, Lord, you don't want me to preach. I can't only talk. But the Lord said, I want you. And this is what I want you to do. He said, I want you to go to this school. I want you to go to this school. I want you to go to that school. Okay? So I had to go to school and learn how to speak. I had to go to school to learn how to, to enunciate properly. I had to go to school to uh, learn the Bible. So so, so my pastorate is a result of 20 some odd years of preparation. But when you know that God has called you to do something, you don't care how much preparation it is. You don't care how long you have to go to school. 
Amen. Amen. This is this is this is something that you're crazy about. This is your passion. So teaching was my passion. Now I I learned over the years skills. I pick up certain skills in teaching. Some of you on this platform, you're great teachers. You're good at what you do, amen, and you're satisfied with it because you picked it up along the way. God has blessed you to be able to learn certain things. That's what you want, that's what he wants you to do. So when he comes back, he wants you to hand back to him more than what you what he has handed to you. Let me give you a second rule of success. The second rule of, of success is this, team up, with people that are good at what you're not good at. Team up with people that are good at what you're not good at. That's what makes Queen's Chapel so unique and such a blessing to me because I can team up with some people who are who are so good at some of uh, at, at a lot of the things I'm not good at. And we all put all that together to help us to make Queen's Chapel the church that God wanted to be. Because the pastor don't know everything. I'm glad I don't know everything. I probably would have killed myself by now trying to do everything. No, but God, but 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 God placed me with fine people, wonderful people. Wonderful people. Team up with people who compliment you and what you're good at. Okay, everyone has something to contribute to your success. If you want to succeed in life and you're, and, and you're connecting with people that don't know more than you, then you're not going nowhere. You need to team up with people that know a little bit more than you. That's the wonderful thing about Queen's Chapel. I'm teaming up with people that know a lot more than what I know. It makes me look good as a pastor. <laughs> Man, that's wonderful stuff, you know? It makes all of us look good as a church because everybody is doing what God has created them to do. And that's the wonderful thing about it. If you want to succeed in life and you're not connected with people that know a little bit more than you, then you're wrong. You need to get with some people that know a little bit more than you. This is why God created Eve for Adam, because God wanted someone to compliment Adam. So he made Eve with her abilities hooked on to Adam and his weaknesses, and they became a team. This is why God God, God does that. God hooks you with people. He connects you with people to help you to be able to be the person that you are to be. In marriage, you complement each other's strength and compensate for each other's weaknesses. See, we don't do that all the time. We tear each other down, don't we? Yeah, we do. Whether we want to admit it or not, sometimes we tear each other down instead of learning each other's strength and focusing on that. This is how Queen's Chapel became a strong, stable church because everyone was placed in positions according to their shape. And this is how we grow in the future. This is how we're going to grow in the future as a church, as we continue. You know, uh, the, the, one of the main things that hurts my heart is to look out in the congregation and see people who has not stepped forward to allow God to use them. And their gifts and graces are just being wasted. Man, that hurts. Let's, let's go to the next one. God said, not only did I give you your ability to honor me and serve others, but here's number three. I gave you your abilities to make a living to make a living. God wants every individual to be self-supporting, not begging or living off other people. I know there's some people who can't work. And if you can't 
work, then you need people to support you. But if you can work, you should work. God created you to work. The first thing God gave Adam after placing him in the garden, you know what that was? He gave Adam a job. He says, keep the garden. Till it. Take care of it. The average person will have at least, the average person in this world will have at least before he or she passes away from this life into eternity, they will have at least two careers in their lifetime, at least. You have some who may exceed that, but at least you'll have, their, the average person has two careers in their life. On your handout, we've given you Deuteronomy uh, 8, 18. It says, remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Did you know that producing wealth is an ability? It just doesn't happen. It just does not happen. You have this ability. You have, when you have people that have the ability and have a heart towards God, and they have this ability to gain wealth, it means they do well with their wealth. When you have people that don't have this ability and doesn't have this gift, did you know that this, the statistic is those persons who win the lottery, within five years, they are broke. They have no gift, they have no ability to handle wealth. But the Bible says God gives you the ability. He gives you the ability to produce wealth. So that means he gives you the ability to make your money. He gives you that ability to be able to take care of yourself. God blesses people with the natural ability to make money, to run a successful business, or, or to, to take care of themselves, to navigate uh, those who, who knows about the stocks and all that kind of stuff. Those, that's natural ability. And we do all this to the glory of God by being honest, ethical, transparent. I mean, you know, um, God blesses you to do that. God said that he wants to give you these abilities so that you can make a living. Not only you are working for the church, but he says, I want you to use this in the marketplace so that people will see in you what God has created in humanity. So he wants you to make a living from the ability that he has given you. So God said, not only did I give you your ability to honor me, to serve others, to make a living, here's number four. God has given you the ability to be an example for others. To be an example for others. Look at 1 Timothy 4. Paul tells Timothy this, put these abilities to work. Throw yourself into your task so everyone may notice your improvement and progress. See what he's saying there? 1 Timothy 4.15. Man, that's a good verse there. Put these abilities to work. Throw yourself into your task so everyone may notice your improvement and progress. In fact, God want people to see you improve. God want people to see you progress. And he want us to testify to say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, I would not be who I am today. Did you know God wants the world to notice your good work? What he meant by let your light shine so that people will see your work and glorify the Father who is in heaven. God want them to see your improvement. God want them to see your intelligence. God want them to see your ability so that they can praise God. You can be a testimony to them to say that, oh, I thank God. Well, thank you for your compliment. But you know what? If it had not been for the Lord, man, I would not have had this today. I would not be the person I am today. What a great opportunity 
to, to give God glory. Using your natural ability makes God the creator looks good. That's what it's all about. I want, I want God to be pleased with what I'm doing. And I want to make God look good. God wants the world to know that God's children are the best workers on the planet. It's a poor testimony when you tell people that you are a Christian, but yet you can't even get to work on time. Come on now. <laughs> You're a poor worker. No, 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 no. No, when God placed those abilities within you, when God uh, bless you with these abilities. He wants you to be a good steward of it. When an employer hires you, he or she should be getting the best, not the worst, because it, it shines a bad light on Christianity. When, a, when an employer hires you, they should know that they're getting someone who is reliable, who's a hard worker, who's honest, who's dependable, who's skilled, always willing to put their best foot forward. This is why you hear businesses when they advertise on a radio or television that sometimes they may say, we're a Christian organization. Why do you think they say that? Because they want you to know, and they want you to know that when you deal with this organization, you're dealing with a reliable, hardworking, honest, dependable, skilled workers. That's what you're dealing with. It's a sin to be lazy. It's a sin to have this ability and not allow God to use you in this ability. It's a sin. That's why in that parable in the 25th uh, chapter of Matthew, when God got to that one person who he gave at least one talent, the person told the Lord, I buried it. I didn't do nothing with it. And you know what God said? He said, you're, you're a wicked, lazy servant. God said not, God, God wants to get the glory out of your life through your abilities, through who you are, who he created you to be. Be proud of who you are. You may not have, but maybe one ability. You may not have, but maybe, maybe one good ability that you're really good at, or maybe two, maybe three, but be satisfied with what you have and allow God to use it. You'd be surprised what God can do. Let's go to the next one. So, so, so God said, not only did I give you your ability to honor me, to serve others, to make a living, but here's number five. I gave you the ability because I want you to have money to share. I want you to have money to share. In other words, I want four you or five. Number five. You skip number four. four. Number number four is to make a living. Number one is to honor God. No, I just number didn't have four. Thank you. Yeah. Number two is to serve others. Number three is to make a living. Okay. So, number, so when we get to number five, he said, I want you to have money to share. I want you to have money to share. I want you to share with those who honestly cannot work or support themselves, who honestly cannot do that. Excuse Give me, yes. I'm sorry, excuse me, Pastor. I thought number four was to be an example for others. Yeah. Number 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 four is to be an example for others. Yeah, that's what he said. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Number, All right. I, number three. Do you have it? Number three. Number 
Number um, four. Yeah, number four is to be an example for oh. others. Yeah, ability. Thank you. That's number four, to be an example for others. Yes. And then number five is that I want you, I want you to have money to share. I want you to share with others. That's why I was giving you earlier those two callings that we have as human beings. We're called to salvation and we're called to serve. One of the ways in which we can serve is that we can share our money with those who honestly, legitimately cannot support themselves. Give to those who are poor and can't work. In fact, Ephesians 4, um, 28 says this, begin using your hands for honest work and then give generously to others in need. Okay? Because when we give to others, God automatically comes and he gives to us. But he want us to give to others. God want us to give um, up to others. He, he want us to, uh, uh, to begin to, um, to, to share our wealth with others. Because when we do that, the scripture tells us that God opens the windows of heaven and he pours out for us blessings we will not have room enough to receive. And the more he gives to us, we need to give back to him. When you give to the poor, according to the scriptures, when you give to the poor, you're giving to the Lord. So God wants us to give. God continuously bless us. He continuously bless us when we bless others. Okay? And we must give to others in need. Why? Because when we give to the poor, it triggers God's blessings upon our lives. You cannot be a disciple and not be generous. You cannot be a disciple and not be generous. The more generous you are, the more God blesses your life. So God want us to get so, so, so I bless you. In other words, I bless you to be a blessing for you to serve. Let's go to number six real quick. Number number six, he said, he says that I want you, I've, 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 uh, I've given you this ability so that you can build up the church. I've given you this ability so that you can build up the church because the church is the family. Our natural ability. I'm about to put everybody on you. God desires that we use our natural ability to make money in order to help build the church. When we build the church, brothers and sisters, we are, listen, we, when we build the church, we are building the kingdom, okay? We're building the kingdom. Now, uh, 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 Ephesians 4 and 12 tells us this, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ, to position uh, uh, in, 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 in of, 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 of uh, strength and maturity. So God want us to, to build up the body of Christ. In order to build up the body of Christ, we're, we're, we're building up the kingdom of God. God expects us to use our ability to help our church family. Okay? There is no, there is no talent you have that cannot be used in one way or the other 
in Queens Chapel. Because God places in each church the people with the talent to move the ministry forward, to, to really build up the kingdom of God. Think about this. Out of all the people in Prince George's County, Anne Arundel County, no matter what county you live in, that God could have placed at Queen's Chapel anyone he chose. The No one else can work your talent. No one else can work your abilities like you can. So what if you don't use your abilities? What, don't, what if you don't use your abilities in these six ways that I just mentioned by honoring God, to serve others, to make a living, to be an example for others? to have money to share with others, to build up the church. What if I don't use it for these six reasons? The reason is what I said earlier, you lose it, okay? You lose it. You lose not only what you're not using, but you also will lose your reward in heaven, okay? But God wants you to be faithful in your ability, okay? Matthew uh, 25 and 28 says, take the talent from him. That one who, who, who I talked about that he hid his talent, the Lord said, take the talent from him who didn't use it and give it to the one who has 10 talents, okay? We, what we don't use, we lose. God has the right to take back what he has given because it came from him. He created us, okay? Because he gave it to us, he has every right to take it back from us. If you don't use it, you definitely will lose it. Okay? Now, let me, let me get to this last part because using your abilities, using your abilities, how do you use your abilities the way God wants you to use them? Here's three ways. Number one, estimate them. Estimate them, Romans 12 and three. It says, because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourself. That's what I want you to pay attention to. Be honest in your evaluation of yourself, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. So we use our abilities the way God wants us to use them by evaluating them, knowing what you can do and knowing what you cannot do, knowing your limitation, knowing your strength, knowing your weaknesses. Evaluate it. Be honest about it. Let me know. Let, let people know where you're satisfied and let people know where you're not satisfied. Let people know that I'm good at this, but I'm not very good at this. Evaluate it. Know who you are. Know what you can do. Do an assessment of your abilities. Make a list. Know your strengths and weaknesses. And especially with parents, parents help, help your children understand what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are. Don't let them hone in on their weaknesses. Help, help them to hone in on their strengths. Okay? Here's number two. Number two is dedicate. Dedicate. Not only do you, do, do you estimate it, but you dedicate it. Romans 12 and 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. So we dedicate it. We dedicate it to the Lord. So, Lord, I may not know exactly what you want to use me for, 
but Lord, I dedicate it back to you. However way you want to use me, Lord, I'm right here. And get involved, my brother and my sister. Get involved. You don't have to necessarily let someone come to you or you're waiting on someone to ask you. You need to get involved because you never know when the Lord is going to call you home. And when the Lord asks you, what did you do with the ability and gift that I gave you? And you're going to tell the Lord, well, Lord, I was waiting on somebody to ask me. No, no, no. You get involved. I've given you this ability so you can get involved in ministry. You never know when the Lord is going to call you home. Don't wait on anybody to ask you. Get involved. Okay? And here's number three. Number three, cultivate them. Cultivate them. That means improve it. Develop it. Practice it. Okay? Talents can be improved. Abilities can be improved with practice, study, and development. Can't get anywhere without that. Okay? Do your best. Study all the time. Study as much as you can about what the Lord has, uh, has provided in you with regard to ability. Okay? Ecclesiastes 10 and 10 says this. Using a dull axe require great strength. So sharpen the blade. That's the value of wisdom. It helps you succeed. So when you begin to develop what God has given you, you improve it, you cultivate it, you're actually sharpening your axe. Okay? You're sharpening that blade so that you can be of value, you can be of wisdom. You can be effective. People will be blessed by what you have to offer. Because why? God has made an enormous investment in you. He created you. He shaped you by putting spiritual gifts and abilities in you. He sent Jesus to die on the cross for you so that you can be forgiven of your sins. Don't let the devil Amen. Uh, 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 make you feel guilty that you cannot work for the Lord. Ask the Lord for forgiveness and move forward. God's going to ask you, what did you, what did you do with what I have given you? If you were to be called home today and God asked you, what did you do with what I have given you? What are you going to tell me? God expects a return on his investment. In fact, um, write, these, write these two scriptures, write this one scripture down, uh, Luke 12, 43. Luke 12, 43. If the master returns and find that the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. God wants to reward us. He wants, God wants to, uh, to uh, 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 be able to, um, to uh, praise you. That's right. God want to be able to praise you. When the devil came to uh, to God and uh, God asked Satan, have you considered my servant Job? And God uh, um, um, began to praise Job. He said, have you considered Job? He's this faithful man. He's a man that, uh, uh, that I'm so proud of. He is a man of God. And the devil said, well, I tell you what, if you allow me to get to him, I'll make him curse you to your face. But God had more confidence in Job. He had confidence to know that even though Job was getting ready to go through something, but yet God was still able to use him. He had confidence in him because he could brag on Job. He knew Job. And Job was a child of the king. Okay, brothers and sisters, that this ends our workshop today. And next week, um, we will be looking at personality, how our personality is connected to our spiritual gifts, our passions, and abilities. Okay, so we'll be looking at that next week.
All right. What I want you to do in your assignment this week, I want you to look at the next chapter uh, in your in your book, in your shape book. Okay. And uh, and I want you to um, to read it. And uh, and I, of course, I'm going to be asking you some questions um, next week on this. And I want you to be able to, uh, I want you to look at the questions also uh, for this week, especially when we're dealing with personality. Okay, we're going to be talking about personality next week. And uh, so in your book on page 69, okay, um, well, there are some questions uh, at the end of the chapter that I like for you to consider. Okay, so uh, please consider these questions at the end when you read this chapter on personality. Okay, there's going to be some things I want to share with you next week, and we're going to be talking about this, but there's a couple questions at the end. It's about three of them. Okay. So please answer those questions. We're going to talk about those at length next week. Okay. And uh, now let me also remind you that um, uh, that Sister Carr will be sending uh, some activities to you this week. Okay. So you probably will be, be receiving that uh, when she gets back. She's out of town this weekend. She's not here with us this week. Um, so she'll be giving you, um, she'll be sending to you through the email uh, some activities that uh, we would like for you to do. Now, our brothers and sisters, next week, we will be in person. We will be in person next week. We'll be in the sanctuary at the church, okay? Uh, and we'll begin at 12 noon. We'll also... Uh, we'll still be on the platform, so you can still use the Zoom if you like, uh, but, uh, but we'll be in person next week, okay? Uh, so please be prepared for that to uh, bring your books with you, your, your uh, notebooks, and be prepared to write. We only have two more weeks, uh, but I think that this, this workshop, these uh, workshops has been really, really uh, beneficial. Uh, to everyone. Okay, let me get some questions. Let me get some comments before we end. Uh, are there any questions or comments? Pastor Butler, yes. I have some comments. Um, there were two things that you said that resonated with me. One of them is being satisfied with the gift of, or the ability that you've been given. And the other one is team up with people who are not, um, team up with people who are, if you're not good at something, team up with people right. who are, you know, skilled in a certain area that you're not good in. Yeah. And um, that's something that I've struggled with my whole life because I've always felt that I had to know everything yeah. Even as far yeah. as like doing certain, going for certain positions, I needed to know everything. And then now I realize that, you know, it's not possible for you to know everything. And that's why you can team up with other people to, you know, so all of the gifts and abilities that you have can come together for, you know, success. So, and also being sad, and that helps me now to be satisfied with my strengths. Yeah. and learning now that I need to cultivate them. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that comment because I used to think that way too, uh, that um, because I'm a pastor, uh, I'm supposed to know everything uh, from the finances of the church all the way over to the trustees of the church, but no, that is not true. That's why God places in the church people, wonderful people who have those gifts to be able to complement what you do not know. And, and we need to always remind people that, that when you discover your spiritual gift, it does not come complete. You have to develop it. It's up to you to develop it. It's up to you to do everything you can to read about it, learn about it, 
so that you can be better at it. That's why we use that example in Matthew 25, that that person was able to present back to the Lord five more talents than what he was given because right. God expects us to uh, learn more. I, I had the gift of, of, uh, of, um, um, of teaching, of uh, leading a church as a pastor, but I have gained so much more knowledge by being around people that know a little bit more than I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what God expects us to do. Yeah. You know? yeah. Anybody else? Anybody else? Any comments? Any? I want to. I want to thank um, Minister George Smith for being our engineer tonight. Uh, he or tonight today. Um, <laughs> you know, he was able to uh, to help us. Um, you know, get on the uh, get on the platform. So thank you so much, Minister George Smith. Appreciate you, brother. You know, uh, anybody else have any? comments or question what do you what did you think about this this part of the uh, workshop what did you think about it? what do you think about it so far do you think this is helpful for other folk somebody unmute themselves somebody talk I, to me i think this is helpful but as you were explaining it no matter what talent or abilities a person has uh, whether they are, you know, the cook or they're the secretary or um, floral ranger. But sometimes they don't get the respect. People don't respect them in that position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's the challenge of where, um, even though the person is good at what they're doing, they yeah. may not feel appreciated in yeah. that position. And then yeah. that's where you start losing people. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think we should do about that, Sister Washington? <laughs> how do you how do you how do you combat that? As as a Christian, you want to work for the Lord, but yet where you're working, you not you don't get the respect, you don't get, you know, you don't, you don't, you know, really get what you feel like. How do you think we should handle that, Sister Washington? Okay, so my opinion is that this goes to Ephesians 2:10, that we are yeah. handiwork of God. Um, yeah. to do the work that he has prepared us to do. So as yeah. long as we as long as we remind ourselves that as you said stated earlier is that we are working to glorify God and yeah. not people. Yeah. Because people are always going to come unfortunately um going to have a negative um thought. Yeah. Um because they may have negative energy. Yeah. But I think we have to um help people to remember um and to empower people that the position that you are that you are fulfilling is that you're good at and then we as um participants in bible study need to help encourage that person in that position yeah yeah we have to uplift them and to remind them that hey yeah you are doing a great job we have to uplift yeah. them so they're getting encouragement from someone because everyone doesn't attend Bible study or, yeah. 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 I think you're right about that. I think what you're saying, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think what you're saying is that we pay more attention to people's, um, you know, responses to us instead of paying more attention to what God wants us to do. You know, exactly. it's more important to, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Any, anybody else? Anybody else that, um, how has these, weeks been so far for you do you think it's helpful you, do you, think it's you are helpful? unmuted say it again i'm sorry say it again i'm sorry hello yes mm -hmm. i can hear you yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i can hear you oh okay mm -hmm. thank you i had a problem angie angie pfeiffer helped me get off of mute so thank you angie but um pastor i just wanted to piggyback off of what she said i had been trying to talk but i got stuck on mute that some people don't respect um uh, other people and it's not that people are in authority because some people look at that and some people when they come to church um they're afraid to show their ability they're afraid to shine because for some reason or another because um 
maybe like a secretarial position in the church. Um, I don't write like you or my letter isn't composed like yours instead of helping that person to say, and then versus saying, oh, you're not doing it right. Mm-hmm. To not to say those things that are not somebody down, but say, you know, you did a good job with this letter, but let's sit here and look at it and see what we can add to it, um, you know, and bring the letter to a, a perfect form. Because um, mm-hmm. we've got to be mindful that the things that come out of our mouth, we can't take it back once it came out. So once you hurt somebody's yeah. feelings, the feelings yeah. are already there. So that person is not going to want to participate or help out the next time because it's like, well, you know, she shot me down the first time or he shot me down the first time. So we need to, everybody's important when you're in the church because we need everybody, like you said. We all need to work together. Um, And we all have abilities that are at different levels. But if we encourage one another and work with one another, and when you get to that point where you got it, turn back and pull somebody up where you are and teach them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So we can't forget, this is a very good reminder that God gave us these abilities, but we shouldn't be greedy with them. We need to share them. We need to share them because in the end, we just, like you said, we're just going to, If we work on our abilities and we get better and better at our abilities and we want to give God the best at all times, like just like you want to give your kids the best you, the best mom, the best dad, you want to give God your best in everything you do, everywhere you go. Your light should never be out. Your light should always be shining so that people can see the God in you. They see that light. Then people want to listen to you a little bit better. They might, they even might want to follow you to say, you know, do you go to church? Where do you go to church? I want to go to church. Be able to tell them something that God has done good in your life and let them see that you're willing to help people. It doesn't matter what level they are. We know I'm not going to start from the same level, but we have to show others that we have God's light in us. There you go. There you go. And I think, yeah, I think that, you know, I don't, I don't know whether you have another device on or not, but, um, but I, I think what you just said is an answer that everyone really need to hear is that, you know, when you work in the church, you're working in a imperfect environment. It's not perfect at all. A lot of people think that church should be perfect, but no, it's not perfect. And I tell people the reason why it's not perfect is because it involves people. Okay? So when you read the word of God and you read about the people in the the word of God, they were not perfect because they were people, you know? And uh, we should be prepared for that as we uh, um, take on um, the challenge of allowing God to use us, we have to uh, to build ourselves up with uh, by helping each other uh, to to encourage each other and to let each other know that um, that you're not by yourself. Yeah, you're not by yourself. So thank you for that comment. Any anyone else? Anyone else? What do you think about these courses so far? I thought it was good. So this is Maya Stevenson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, So I thought it was good because as a young person um, trying to figure out my abilities and my um, what like my shape and what God wants me to be. I don't know many kids my age who are like going out trying to find their abilities, what they're really good at and adding that to like their life, trying to figure out how to be the best person. But I think that it was good because it, it would help me to become a better person and figuring out who I'm supposed to be. Because sure, I might know, oh, I want this as a career or I might want to do this or this is what I'm good at. But adding that to who I'm supposed to be and my characteristics, <laughs> it helped me to um, be able to let my light shine and let people see the goodness 
that there is. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Do you do you think that this course would help a lot of young people? Yes, I do, because I think that it's important for every young person to know um, that God loves them, but also to know what they're made of, what abilities they have, that no ability is bad, yep. that everybody's different, everybody is made a different way, but we're made as one. Right. But right. I think that everybody should know their abilities to know what they're good at so that they can partner with people who are strong in one area that they're um, weak in so that we can all work together as a society. Good, good. Well, I thank you for your comment. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for your comment there. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else? What do you, what do you think so far? Okay, I don't wanna hold you too long. Just want to, uh, okay. Well, we're gonna end here. Um, we're gonna have a word of prayer. And uh, like I say, uh, next week we'll be in person. Okay, we'll start at 12 noon. We'll still have the um, platform up, the uh, Zoom up. And, um, and, and, uh, and you'll still be able, those of you who may not be able to, to get to the church, you'll still be able to, uh, um, participate in the uh, uh, in the workshop next week. Personality is going to be a very good class. I think you're going to enjoy that. So um, so uh, um, we're looking forward to seeing all of you that can and will come out in person uh, next week, uh, next Saturday. We're looking forward to seeing you, okay? All right. Well, let's have a word of prayer and then we can end, okay? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this class today. We thank you for knowing that when you created us, you created us with a purpose. You created us, Lord God, to be the best that we can be. You created us, Lord God, that we can make a difference in the world in which we're living. So Lord, we pray today that every person that is on this platform today I send a special prayer to each and every one of them that you will bless them, that you will continue to open their eyes and open their understanding, Lord, to the word of God. Then, Lord God, we realize that sometimes there are, there are times, Lord God, we don't feel appreciated. There are times that it's a challenge, Lord God, to, to do the work of the kingdom. But Lord, I pray that as we come together as one, that we will encourage each other, that we will be a blessing to each other, that we will be able, Lord God, to let each other know that you're not by yourself. So bless us, Lord God, as we leave this platform today to go about our, our, our day. We pray, Father God, that uh, you would bless the service on tomorrow, Sunday morning, uh, which will be virtual. Uh, but we thank you so much, Lord God, for that opportunity just to worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, Lord, uh, watch between me and thee while we're absent from one another and keep us, Lord. Protect us and keep us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Amen. We'll, we'll see you at the church.